Hi viewers, welcome to Bow Shop. Today uh, we will be discussing the second part of the respiratory system according to IP system number class nine. Okay. So before I start, I will request you to please subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed yet. And if you are a new viewer to my channel. And if you are liking the videos, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from this video. And do make it before you start your day. So we will also start with a short meditation. So uh, for starting, let us concentrate on our point of light. Think that light is for the world view. Okay. And your experience, your feeling that light is enlightening your whole body. You're feeling very relaxed and very calm and quiet without the experience. Your hands, your feet, your sensation, without the So we'll start, uh, we have ended last, uh, in, in my last video, we have ended in the cellular respiration. The cellular respiration is what? It's the complex chemical change which is occurring inside the cell where the energy is being released, okay, from the glucose we take in, that from the carbohydrate, from the food we take in, from that glucose is broken down to give energy at the cellular level, okay. So there are two main phases inside the cell, that is glycolysis and Krebs cycle. We have studied earlier. Okay. Glycolysis, that is breakdown of the glucose and the Krebs cycle. So glycolysis it occurs in the outside the mitochondria in the cytoplasm, and Krebs cycle is within the mitochondria. Glycolysis, the product form is the pyr pyruvic acid, which <clears throat> breaks down further breaks down into uh, ethanol in plants and lactic acid in animals, okay? And in pyruvic, I mean, in, uh, in Krebs cycle, the product, uh, the pyruvic acid or lactic acid is formed, okay? And it step by step, it uh, changes into ATP and carbon dioxide, okay? This glycolysis, uh, it, this process occurs anaerobically, whereas Krebs cycle uh, occurs aerobically. It means air. Okay. In this glycolysis, very little energy is released, whereas in uh, Krebs cycle, much energy is released. Even the oxygen that is taken in during ox uh, during this process is used to release the hydrogen ions, which uh, I mean to remove the hydrogen ions. Which are being released in this process to uh, make it water and remove from the system. Okay, so this uh, process that is the cell, which uh, where the uh, these two processes take place, it's the it's the picturization of this uh, processes. That is, one is the, if it, this is the cell and this is the, these are the mitochondria in cytoplasm. In this cytoplasm, glycolysis takes place, and in the mitochondria, the Krebs cycle takes place. Okay. Then, uh, see, this is the tissue level. Uh, I mean, uh, respiration. Okay. Here you can see the tissue cell. Okay. Uh, this is the tissue cell. You can see from there the carbon dioxide is being released. These are the uh, RBCs. Okay. From there, carbon dioxide is being released. Uh, I mean, the carbon dioxide from the cell is released to the uh, 
uh, this uh, RBC, where the carbon dioxide combines with the RBC uh, hemoglobin of the RBC, heme of the RBC to form carboxyhemoglobin. And the and some are also is released into the plasma as carbonate. Okay. And it is carried to the uh, lungs. Okay? Then the white blood cells are here. So this is the blood uh, vessels which has what, what? Plasma, the capillaries rather, which <coughs> have the plasma, the white blood cells, and RBC. Uh, Red blood cells, okay. So red blood from the red blood cells, carbon dioxide. I mean oxygen, uh, which has been combined, uh, carried from the lungs to the cellular level, where the red blood cell has combined with the heme to form uh, uh, this. Uh, to, uh, I mean the carbon. Uh, sorry, oxygen is combining with the RBC uh, and. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the hemo of the RBC and getting carried to the cells where the oxygen is released to the cell. Okay, this we have studied in the earlier video. Now we will continue with this. <clears throat> the we will now can come to the respiratory organs. So, the first respiratory organ we have the nose. Then second is pharynx, third is larynx, then trachea, then bronchi, and the lungs. Okay, so the respiratory organ one by one coming. First is nose, then pharynx, then larynx, then trachea, bronchi, and lungs. Okay, <clears throat> so first we come to nose. So we from the picture you can see this is the first that is the nose from the where the air is inhaled. Okay, this is the an outer respiratory organ, the first uh, part of the respiration where the breathing takes place. Then we will come to tissue, then uh, cellular level respiration. So first is what? The uh, external respiration where it is taking place, where the breathing uh, occurs. Okay? So first the air gets inside to the external uh, organs that is known as nose. Okay? These are the nasal chamber from where the air is getting in. So that see the arrow where, where the air is getting inside. Okay. To our nostrils. Okay. The external part has two nostrils, two holes we have that those are known as nostrils, which are separated by a cartilaginous septum. So the nose is being separated by a cartilaginous septum. The two nostrils is being separated by one cartilaginous septum. Okay. Some hairs are also present in the nostrils that prevent larger particles from getting inside the central system. Okay. The two nostrils open into a pair of nasal chambers. So see this, these two are the nostrils, and this is the septum dividing the two nostrils. Okay. And uh, they both of them are entering into two different nasal chambers. They are called pair of nasal chambers. Okay. Now, what are the functions of these nasal chambers? They warm the air as it passes over. When they are, when the air is passing through this chamber, the air gets warm. Okay, they add moisture to the air. Even moisture also adds to the air. Okay, the mucus secretion. The the these nasal chambers have mucus secretions that entraps the harmful particles which by chance enters the nostrils. Okay, now that's why it is advised us. From the childhood, we have heard our parents, even the doctors also say, so breathe through the nose, okay, and not through the mouth. So because this the foreign, uh, any foreign thing which has been entered, I mean, any by chance have entered our nostril, uh, will get entrapped, okay, to the mucus secretion that will not enter into our body system. And if we take from the mouth, the mouth is bigger space and it can easily get into our body. Okay? Any germs, any foreign dust particles like that. Okay? So the sensory cells of the smell, okay, they are located in the special pockets which are situated high up in the nasal chamber. So in the nasal chamber, we have sensory cells of smell okay, in the special pockets 
Okay, these are present in the high after the nasal chambers. They have these sensory cells which help us to smell. When smelling something special, a little sniff. We do this, you know, when we are smelling something special. So that little sniff which carries the odor up to that pocket. Okay. Now we come to pharynx. So see, let us see the picture once. So first, this is the nasal chamber. Okay, from the nose, we are getting to the pharynx. This portion is the pharynx. Okay, just when the nasal chamber is connecting to the rest of the respiratory organ, that is known as pharynx. Okay, so let us see what is there about pharynx. It's a wide cavity which is situated at the back of the mouth, okay, into which the nasal chamber is open at the back. So, at the back, the nasal chamber is opening. Let's see here also. This is the nasal chamber. Okay, at the back, this is the nasal chamber coming and this is the mouth. So, back of the mouth, there is a wide cavity. So, I've seen this blank space here. This is known as the pharynx. Okay. Another picture quite clear. So this is the pharynx, the back of the mouth. The nasal chamber is opening here and the back of the mouth there is, at the back of the nasal chamber there is the gap opening, wide gap opening which we have found. Okay. Now, it's a common passage for air and food because at the back of the mouth so food can also get in and air can also get in from the nasal chamber. It leads into the trachea, that is the air tube, which is coming later on, and the esophagus, which is at just after the mouth. Okay, just below the uh, the uh, pharynx, you can see two tubes are there. One is air tube, that is trachea, and the food tube, that is esophagus. Okay, so both of them, both of them are there, just one beside the other, one on the back of the other. When esophagus is not used, okay, dorsally behind the trachea, that is one uh, is in front, another is in the back. So trachea is a front and back is the esophagus. Food pipe is the back at the of the trachea. Now when esophagus is not used, it is partially collapsed. Okay, but uh, to its soft walls. Okay, and the entrance to the trachea is also guarded by epiglottis. <laughs> so both of them have one uh, 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 adaptation so that the food does not get into the I mean uh, the food does not get into the trachea and the air does not get into the this one esophagus. <laughs> So when the food pipe is not used, that is if the esophagus is not used, then it collapses. Okay. So that the air does not generally get into the esophagus. And when the trachea is not used, when I mean when the food is getting inside, the trachea has to be closed because otherwise the food will get inside the trachea. Okay. So that is not the way for the food to go. So the, there will be a flap that is known as epiglottis, which covers the trachea. When you are swelling the food, when we are swelling the food, that time the epiglottis closes the trachea. Okay, it and if the epiglottis by chance closes incompletely, okay, and the food gets inside the trachea, then we will have to cut the food out. Otherwise, it can choke our throat. Okay, I mean, it will, it will choke the trachea, that is, I mean, it will block the trachea so that the food, uh, I mean, the air will not get inside the trachea and that can lead to the fatal condition. Okay. So now we have the larynx. Now let us see to the picture, what is, where is the larynx? Okay, so see. This is the pharynx I told you. From here, you can see the two pipes. One is trachea here, another is the esophagus here. Okay. Now, 
This is the larynx here. Okay, this is the larynx here. The food pipe goes in this way, the, uh, the air goes in this way, and the food goes in this way. When this uh, esophagus is not in use, it collapses. Okay. And when this is not in, I mean, when the food is being swallowed, that time this epiglottis, this is the epiglottis here, it will close the tract. So now we come to the larynx, which comes here as the voice cord. Okay. Vocal cord. Voice box, it is called. So the larynx is known as voice box or Adam's apple. Okay. Now it is a hollow cartilaginous structure which is located at the start of the windpipe. Okay, just at the start of the windpipe where the trachea is being started, that in that portion there's a hollow cartilaginous structure which is known as the voice box or larynx or Adam's apple. You can see, you can feel that uh, uh, this larynx. Sometimes some of the persons they can uh, see that that comes out. No, the, from the throat you can see that coming out. It's like a, a solid portion which is being felt. It goes moves up and down when you're uh, swallowing. Okay, so it can be felt in front part of the neck and during swallowing this part rises or falls. It consists of two ligamentous folds. Okay, two vocal cords are there. When air is forcibly expelled through this vocal cords, they vibrate, which produces the sound. So it has two ligamentous folds, which is known as which are known as vocal cords. And when air is forcibly expelled through this vocal cords, when we are uh, speaking, you know, that is what happens. The air from inside that is expelled out. Okay, comes out to this. Uh, Vocal cords very forcefully when these vocal cords vibrate and this produces sound. The muscles that are attached to this cord they adjust the distance between the two cords. That is, the two cords the distance are being attached are adjusted by the muscles which are surrounding the cord. Okay, and then also their tensions which produces the range of the sounds. Okay, now the voice. We are talking though know, the voice which comes out. The sound produced by the vocal cords of the larynx. It is the sound that is produced by the vocal cords of the larynx. Okay. The vocal. When the vocal cords that produce the sound which comes out, okay, that is the voice. That is our voice. Now the speech, what is speech? The character which is given to the voice by the complex movement of the lips, cheeks, tongue, jaws. Okay. When we are moving our lung, uh, I mean lips, okay, the cheeks, the tongue, and the jaws, okay, when we are moving these one, these produces a complex, uh, I mean, these complex movements that gives a character to our voice. Okay, that is our speech. Okay, it consists of words and or syllables. It is a speciality of only the human species because other animals cannot speak. Okay, they can make sound, but they cannot speak like the human being. So this is the character for the human species, special character for the human species, that is the speech. Okay, so that speech comes out from the complex movement of our lips, cheeks, tongue, and jaws. Okay, next. So... This is the picture of our throat. This C. This is the voice box. Okay. Just, just above the trachea, just where the trachea is starting. Okay. Then what is trachea? Trachea is known as what? It's the windpipe. Okay. It emerges from the larynx. Just from the larynx, it emerges out down below in the neck where it is partly covered by a thyroid gland. Just uh, when it is partly covered by a thyroid gland. Why it's partly? Because uh, it is covering some part, some part is not being covered. So, so it's partly covered by a thyroid, by our thyroid gland. Okay. 
Now, walls are strengthened. The trachea walls are strengthened by three shepherd cartilaginous structures or rings. Okay, the trachea is incompletely covered by rings. At the back side, it's not covered. So, the half three shepherd structures, cartilaginous structures. Okay, rings. The rings, what they do, they provide flexibility and keep it distended for permanent. So, it does not collapse. So for that reason, do not make, do not allow the tracker to collapse. It remains this piece of its cartilaginous structure, cartilaginous rings that keep it distended permanent. Okay. Okay. Now we come to bronchi. After the trachea, the windpipe. That divides just before entering the lung, that becomes two tubes. Okay, those are known as bronchi. Okay, two is bron plural is bronchi, and the singular is bronchus, okay, which enters the respective lung. They further divide into secondary, then tertiary bronchi. Okay, after entering the lungs, before entering the lungs. It just two tubes are there. Then after entering the lungs, it further divides. And finally, after the tertiary, uh, this one. Yes. Uh, after this tertiary, of uh, this one, uh, bronchi, I mean the tertiary bronchi, they further divide into more branches. And at the end, they enter into what? enter into alveoli. They further end into alveoli. So the cartilaginous rings which are there in the trachea, they're also present in the small bronchi to keep them distended. It does not collapse. Okay. So that it does not collapse. Okay. They do not collapse. They are still fine attuned. I told you, uh, tertiary bronchi, tertiary bronchi, they are known as bronchioles, which are about one millimeter in thickness and are without the cartilaginous rings. But after tertiary bronchi, the bronchioles which are there, the further divisions of the bronchi, they do not have the cartilaginous rings. Okay. The bronchioles ultimately end into a tiny cluster air chambers. Okay, those are known as air sacs or alveoli. The okay. singular is alveolus. Now, each alveolus is surrounded by a network of blood capillaries. Each of them are surrounded by blood capillaries. The walls of each alveoli are extremely thin. Okay, the alveoli walls are extremely thin. There's a one cellular, one cell thick there. So thin there, those um, alveoli thin the <coughs> walls are. Okay, and they are moist, which allows the gaseous exchange. How? To diffusion. So diffusion of gases takes place when they come to alveoli level. Okay. When the ga this gas comes to alveoli level, there the gases, a gaseous exchange takes place to diffusion. Because that the walls of the alveoli, they are very thin and they are moist. Now oxygen of the air. From the air, we take oxygen, the alveoli take oxygen from that, which dissolves in a thin layer of water, which is present there, or fluid, which is present there in the other side, on the outside of the alveoli, that covering the surface of the alveoli. There, it mixes with it, and what will happen? It will dissolve in it, and it will, there will be diffusion taking place. So see the picture, this is the larynx, these are the tra trachea, this is the trachea, which has three shepherd cartilaginous rings, okay? And before entering the lungs, there are two bronchi, these are two bronchi, okay? Now, when after entering the lungs, it branches to secondary and then tertiary. And last, they are entering into air sacs or alveoli, okay? Bronchioles, and then these are branching into each uh, tertiary bronchi, uh, bron uh, this one branching into bronchioles and then they are ending into alveoli. Okay. This is the picture. This is the picture of the uh, trachea. Then we'll, it will come to the 
lungs main part. Okay, because the lungs will be covered with a membrane. Okay, and between the two lungs chamber, we have the heart in between. Okay, the lung is covered with a membrane which is known as pleural membrane, and it is skeletally covered with the rib cage. Okay. And between the two, there are double layer of pleural membrane, two layers of pleural membranes are there. And in between the pleural membranes, we have what? The pleural fluid. Pleural fluid we have. So we will discuss this in the next video. So till then, go to this. If you have any doubt, please do write in the comment box. And if you are liking the videos, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And do meditate before you start your day. So thank you, thank you for joining and have a good day. And hello. And uh, you will get the description of the uh, this uh, the previous video. The link is there in the description box. Okay. Thank you.